to Josh's YouTube channel. Josh is sitting right here. I'm meteorologist Josh Nagelberg, and I'm going to give you a look into what's upcoming. Today is the first day of meteorological winter, December the 1st, and uh, there has been already some chatter about how December looks like it's going to be a lot colder than recent Decembers, and I'm going to kind of drill down what I think and uh, give you guys kind of a rundown as to what to expect. You know, we're coming up on the Christmas season here. A uh, little less than, what, four weeks to go, and um, shopping season, and it's been a warm fall for the most part for many of us here in the United States, um, and that has not been different than any of the past several years, unfortunately, but uh, I do see some changes coming on the horizon. I want to kind of drill down into all of those. Uh, I know my young daughter here is excited for potentially some snow this winter. We don't get a lot of it where I live, and, um, you know, I always ask her, hey, you know, why did the snowman go to the middle of the ocean? The answer, of course, is because Snowman is an island. All right. You're going to get a lot of dad jokes. This is going to be the home of the dad joke, by the way. I'm going to share my screen with you all and show you what we're talking about here, okay? This is my title graphic. Uh, we are predicting here at Josh's Severe Weather uh, one of the coldest starts to winter in recent memory. You know, we've had a lot of Decembers recently where I live in the Carolinas where we've had to run the air conditioning. I do not really foresee that being an issue this holiday season, and I'm going to go into why that is. Um, the last time we had a, a start to winter this cold uh, was actually in the year 2010. I was still living up northeast, so of course it was cold for me, but uh, in the Carolinas, it, it was a cold winter as well. It started off pretty cold. What we're going to see is uh, some big changes here. I'm going to go into why, uh, but we're predicting probably in about 10, 12 days that the uh, the, um, the colder than average weather is actually going to be here for a prolonged period of time. And what we have to watch out for is a dip in the jet stream, uh, perhaps, and I'm not guaranteeing this because we really can't do something like that this far out in, in the weather world. But if we do have the ability for some form of low pressure to form in the Gulf of Mexico and you have cold air already in place, then you've got to watch uh, for some phasing of the northern jet stream and the southern jet stream. When those happen, uh, definitely Katie bar the door for potentially a southeast or even east coast winter storm. And, um, you know, there are some ingredients for that to happen, but of course we're going to have to look at various weather variables that will put something like that in motion. You know, we have had winter storms in December. We've even had them in November before. In fact, a couple years ago um, in the Raleigh area, I think it was 2019, we did have some snowfall the second week of December in parts of Southern Virginia and the, the Northwest Piedmont of North Carolina picked up over a foot of snow in that, but it wasn't a cold winter. Uh, it was actually just one of those, you know, everything came together at the right time. It was cold. We had a rain snow line in the Southeast, nothing new there. What I'm trying to see happen if this pattern persists is a rain snow line that's much farther Southeast, maybe even off the coast. What that means is uh, those of you with beach homes may want to keep an eye on this uh, in case we do have some form of cyclogenesis that's the formation of low pressure uh, coming up the east coast all right so let me get that out of the way um, let's take a look here at snow cover in the northern hemisphere and one thing that i want to point out um, because it's been rotating around the internet is that um, for the thanksgiving period in the last 56 years we have not seen as much snow cover in the northern hemisphere as we've seen that's global this is from rutgers and noaa uh, now, the last few days, that has actually tailed off a little bit. There's been kind of a warmer cycle. Uh, maybe this is accounting for that incredible lake effect snow we saw in the Buffalo area here um, the weekend before Thanksgiving, uh, where some spots picked up, I think, seven feet of snow, which is insane. Um, however, um, the fact that we're on this side of the line definitely enhances the risk for colder air to make its way down. Now, we've got to get some more things in place for that to happen. Uh, I'm going to show you um, what the... Um, water temperatures are looking like. This is from Tropical Tidbits, and you can see uh, very clearly in the blue here, this is a La Nina, uh, when the water is colder than average across the eastern Pacific south of the equator. We've had this for three years. Uh, it does vary. It, it does vary in that we don't necessarily see kind of a flat line, more of kind of a curve, uh, but you can see um, this uh, Nino 3.4 index shows that we are in a, a fairly moderate to strong La Nina and I don't believe that is predicted to change anytime soon. Now, uh, in the winter time, um, the La Nina and how it affects the United States, I'm gonna kind of show you guys that here. I had it just a second ago. 
Typically what that means for us, especially in the eastern United States, is a milder and drier weather pattern on the southern tier of the country, including Florida, the Gulf Coast, Texas. Uh, that does not mean, of course, that the jet stream stays put here. It will shift from time to time. Uh, in fact, we had the La Nina in place in February of 2021 when that extreme cold outbreak hit Texas, Louisiana, and uh, fried the grid here with extreme cold and snow. Um, so that's there's no guarantee that the entire winter is going to be drier and warmer than average. Do we end up there? I think, you know, there are probably 50-50 chances of that happening. Uh, but what I also think is that um, the climate models that continue to show uh, the milder than average temperatures down south have shown kind of a trend towards some slightly colder weather. Um, and that may be accounting for the fact that we have received more than average snow cover already for this time of the year in the northern hemisphere. Uh, so we're going to take a look at that. Um, I'm also going to show you all here real quick um, what the next week or so looks like before we get into the longer term. Now, this is from Tropical Tidbits. It's the GFS operational model. I always caution people to look at just one model run beyond eight, 10 days. It's not going to be super accurate, but you can get a feel for what's going on. Uh, this is the uh, run from last night. So colder air has made its way in and high pressures in control in the eastern U.S. We saw snow yesterday in Seattle. The northwest has been cold. Uh, storm system dropping down into Southern California and very cold air. That's the blue here uh, tailing this uh, winter storm that's going to impact North Dakota and Minnesota. By the way, um, we just got done with a winter storm in Minnesota a couple days ago. So yet another uh, round of snow is coming for parts of northern and eastern Minnesota, along with some very cold air and uh, certainly some strong uh, winds right in the backlash of that low pressure system, which tracks along Lake Superior and then up into Canada. Uh, what this is going to do is allow some milder air in the southwest to stream northeastward onto the east coast at the start of the weekend. Then it's going to turn colder just like that Saturday night and Sunday. But this cold weather is not going to persist for very long. You can see more mild air gathering on the Gulf Coast early next week. Uh, but look at this. This is a, a big cold air mass, and this is kind of a, a piece of the polar vortex here, this circulation uh, that does drop down from the middle of Canada into the northeast. This means maybe some more persistent cold is going to move into the region here. Uh, we've got another storm system at the end of next week. We'll watch down south for heavy rain. Uh, maybe even some stronger storms, but again, a little bit too soon to make that call. But then watch, yet another uh, Arctic air mass is coming on down into the northeast. So this is the 10th. And uh, after that, uh, we're going to have to watch and see what happens in the northeastern United States. Um, this indicates that a block of higher pressure over Greenland is going to create a more favorable storm track on the east coast, but that it remains to be seen. We actually look at indices like the NAO, that's the North Atlantic Oscillation. When that goes negative, that means we get troughing in the eastern United States and ridging in Greenland and the northeastern uh, parts of Canada, and that allows cold air to dive down very much into the southeast. That could start to happen as soon as next weekend or the following week. Then what we have to watch out for is how strong is that block going to be? Where's the cold air going to set up? And are we going to look at potentially some Gulf of Mexico cyclogenesis, uh, which means rain for Florida, but more importantly, with cold air in place, potentially something to watch in the southeast coming up the east coast the week of the 12th of December. And then uh, cold air continues to pour down. It doesn't look like it's going to warm up anytime soon for the eastern, maybe two thirds of the US. We may get some warming uh, in South Florida temporarily until the next shot of cold air comes down. So those of you in Florida are going to have to maybe uh, put some socks on with your sandals. Uh, but the West warms up and that means it could definitely be cold setting the stage here for Christmas week in the eastern United States. Uh, we're going to take a look real quick here at temperatures from Weather Bell and you can see um, that cold air gathering in Western Canada, and it continues to warm up here on the Gulf Coast. You see these oranges um, indicating milder air, but look at this front that's coming through this weekend here. Definitely a sharp cutoff between the warm air and much colder air, which will start spilling in from south or, or from uh, central Canada, and that is going to drop down in waves, it looks like. You can kind of see this trend here where cold air comes down, it continues to drop a little bit farther south and east with time. And by the middle of December the 16th, uh, we've got a shot at some much colder weather. Um, this is a look at that temperature change, by the way. It looks like it's coming right around the 8th or 9th on the ensemble, the GFS ensemble, that is um, the average uh, of multiple models that are, or multiple ensemble members that are run 
um, around um, today. So now we look out here 180 hours and you can see that temperature drops off and it continues to get colder and colder as we head into next weekend. These are the European model weeklies from the control European. You can see this is departure from average temperature. It's already looking much colder than average in Western Canada. What we have to watch for is, does it get a lot warmer up in here? If it does, then cold air can attack the Southeast United States. And you can see that does look like it's gonna start happening here at the end of next week into the weekend. Look at those departures, You know, maybe as much as 15, 20 below average. Um, we also want to see if there's going to be cold in Western Alaska and milder air in Western Canada that allows colder air to just shoot straight on down here into the southeast. Uh, we also have to watch the southwest um, if it gets cold everywhere down here, um, but milder air uh, persists over the Gulf, then we have to see if there's some form of teleconnection where storms can form in the Gulf of Mexico and maybe try to come up the east coast. Um, this could potentially, uh, if it sets the stage here for this much cold air, could potentially lead to some form of winter weather all the way down close to the Gulf Coast. Mm. So again, way too early to make that exact call, but something we're going to have to keep watching for. Um, but nonetheless, um, it's going to stay cold right on through the end of the month with respect to average. So I don't think we're going to need to run the AC north of I-4 anytime soon once we get past about December 10th or so, if this model is correct. Uh, you can see yet another wave of cold coming in right around Christmas time. The Northeast could be quite cold and look at Western uh, Canada and look at Alaska. Um, some signs that yet more cold air in Alaska is gonna form. So we'll have to keep an eye on this as we head into January. And you can kind of see that discharge of cold air right into the Northeast and Great Lakes. And with this kind of cold and the Great Lakes being warm, I would be prepared for more uh, lake effect snow as, as we head to the end of December and into January uh, in the snow belts here of the Northeast and Great Lakes. You can see towards the end of this, um, the European does try to warm things back up with a bit of an early to mid January thaw, and um, that would certainly be within the realm of possibilities, um, but definitely a cold December. If you look at this. This is the uh, CFS climate forecast system, and we'll take a look at December and notice it is still predicting a milder than average month of December in the southeast, but you can see the framework is set for much colder weather. Uh, to attack from Western Canada coming down into the plains and into January, you can see that that cold with respect to average intensifies. So if you're in the Northern US, maybe even into Texas, uh, do be prepared for cold waves to be pretty persistent. Same goes for the Northwest. And then as we head into February, um, NOAA's predicted kind of a milder than average winter in the East and South, especially towards the Gulf Coast, but the climate forecast system is trended colder. Uh, so this is a, a battleground we're going to have to really much watch here in the month of February before things start to moderate uh, in uh, the month of March, uh, where you can see milder than average weather looks like it may try to make a comeback. Let's take a look at snow depth here. <clears throat> this is the European Ensemble, and you can see um, that the area of snow on the ground does grow quite a bit here as we head into next week, starting from the north, but then the uh, snow belts of the Great Lakes, and then we get to next weekend. And if you average all the European ensemble members, they do show some possibilities of snow all the way down, looks like maybe to Interstate 40, uh, as we get into the week of December 12th. Does this mean for certain that we're gonna have a winter storm in places like Memphis, Little Rock, Oklahoma City, Raleigh, Charlotte? No, certainly not, but enough ensemble members show that that's a possibility that we're going to have to watch out for that. Uh, we'll look real quick at the NAO. This shows uh, a negative NAO once we get later into this week and especially next week. Um, what that basically means is that um, higher than average pressure over Greenland allows cold air to come down and a negative NAO sets the stage for what could be a cold eastern U.S. and something we'll have to watch for winter weather as well in the eastern coast. I'll show other oscillations later, but we're kind of running out of time. Um, but real quick, I uh, do want to show you guys something that we have to keep an eye on, and <laughs> no guarantees, of course, but a lot of people on here may remember 1989. It was a very cold outbreak that came down uh, into the central United States. You can see uh, this is the map of, I believe, the 23rd of December that year, right before Christmas. A big high came down, and what happened was several surges of Arctic air dropped down into the central and eastern U.S. around the middle of December. And that lasted through Christmas before things warmed up. But at the end of the really cold air, there was a low pressure that came up the southeast coast. And that led to some incredible snow totals in eastern North Carolina 
and snow all the way down into northern Florida and southern Georgia, where several inches rec were recorded, along with very cold air, single digits down to the central Gulf Coast states. Uh, you know, when we have multiple cold outbreaks and we've got the negative NAO uh, moderating into a more positive uh, NAO or a neutral NAO, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we definitely have to keep our eyes on something like this. Not a slam dunk at this point, uh, but definitely something that I think we're going to have to keep an eye on. So that's a lot for you guys. We're going to have more uh, daily and weekly updates coming up here on Josh's Severe Weather, but I really appreciate your time and uh, hope you guys enjoy the month of December. We'll talk soon. Take care. God bless.